this is Paul Taubman with 9.Connects. I'm glad you could join us here today. As usual, we have an hour packed uh, uh, hour of information, uh, more than uh, we can usually shake a stick at over here. So we're going to jump onto this here very, very quickly. Today's topic is 3D without the ME, and these are the things that we're going to try to cover here today. So really the whole point of this, before we even go on any further with our, uh, our agenda items, is that we're trying to empower you so that you can use Altium Designer to do 3D. Um, I know that a lot of us become very reliant on our mechanical folks or our drafting folks. We try to uh, rely on other sources, but we have to empower ourselves to do that. So here are a couple of the points that we're going to look at today. First and foremost, we're going to look at how to make or use 3D bodies. And I'm also going to show you a neat trick on how to use the board stack up to also make some step files as well within Altium. I'm also going to talk about importing components into Altium. You may have heard of step files. That's a big thing that we want to bring into Altium. So not only how to import them in, but also to deal with the orientation issues uh, that are associated with them. In fact, that's probably the bigger issue. Importing is not the hard part. Getting everything aligned up is the bigger issue. And then lastly, I'm going to talk about components that you can find outside of Altium. There's two sites I'm going to quickly show you. And then I'm going to turn over the webinar to my colleague, Tom Cassidy, who's going to talk about a tool called Onshape. We don't have a partnership with them. We don't sell their product. However, Tom's used this tool a number of times for projects we have done for customers. He's found it to be not only cost effective, but very, very efficient. And we figured that if we're going to empower you in making your own 3D bodies or 3D components, this is a definitely a viable option as well. All right, obviously we can't cover all the topics. And trust me, I've tried. It's just so difficult for me. Uh, by the time I'm done with these things, um, I usually have to cut out a tremendous amount of information just to make it fit in the hour's time. So where can you look for things? Look at Altium's tech docs. And I got to admit that you know, being a former Altium employee, they have done a great job with their tech docs over time. Originally, they used to be just a bunch of PDFs that they threw in with the tool. They've gotten things online. They've really cleaned them up. They're really keeping them up to a date, as far as I can tell, especially in comparison to uh, the prior times when I worked for them. So definitely take a look at those tech docs, a really great source for information. And by the way, just as a, a good search engine, feel free to use Google to look for those tech docs as well, because Google does a really good job finding things within the Altium tech docs. Altium's forums, take a look at those as well. There's over eight years of information pertaining to the 3D capability. If you really think about it, what projected Altium forward to become what you'd call a tier one EDA tool, it's its 3D capability. And really, even to this day, I'm not sure other companies have uh, fully caught up with that. In addition to that, uh, there's also Altium's bug crunch and feature request pages. And the reason I've mentioned those is that, respectively, you've got the sanity check and the wish list. With the bug crunch, if you're having a problem with it, is it really a problem with the tool? Well, the sanity check that you can do is to look in the bug crunch to see if other people are having a similar problem. And if there's a feature that's just not working the way you think it should work, or maybe they should be able to enhance it, then you can look at the feature request to see if there's already a wish list out there as to that that particular feature. So take a look at those areas. They will definitely help you in this uh, particular endeavor. All right. Obviously, too, you have colleagues around you. Um, and it, use those colleagues that you have, especially those who are using Altium for any tips and tricks making 3D bodies. And of course, for the MEs or the drafters, if you do have them available, talk to them about how to approach a 3D model. Because it's one thing to draw these things. It's another thing to kind of get your uh, let's say, act together in order to draw this according to scale. And there may be different approaches depending on what you're trying to draw. So uh, use, your, use your human resources accordingly. And of course, here at 9.connects, uh, you know, we are certainly uh, big on libraries. In fact, in, I didn't necessarily do this for the presentation we have here today, but recently, just before this presentation, we updated our uh, site to talk about library methodology under design services. So if you want to see what our philosophies are in regards to framework and components, uh, feel free to take a look at that. In addition to that, uh, we do do library cleanups and rebuilds. We've done that for a few customers as of late. So if your libraries are getting a little stale or you want to get a little more information into them, especially the intellectual data that you'd use for part selection and for bill of materials, feel free to give us a call. We can take a look at that and help you with that even with rebuilds as well, meaning that, hey, look, some of your symbols are, are getting a little outdated, or everybody's got a different symbol and you want a uniform symbol, those kind of things that we can help you with as well. Lastly, uh, we also handle PCBs, which are very mechanically challenging. There's a number of them. I wish I could show you some of the things that we had. Unfortunately, we couldn't get NDAs for them. But we certainly can consult on them, and we certainly have designed them. 
As a matter of fact, Tom, who's going to be presenting a little bit later on, is working on a rather challenging one. Again, I don't think he can uh, discuss it, but it's something that we do here at 9.connects. All right, I promise you two more slides, and then we're going to get on to the good stuff. The big question is, why are we bothering? Because obviously these things make pretty pictures. But there's a big problem out there, and you probably have felt this one way or another, is that there's the ECAD world and the MCAD world. And these are two very different domains. And the things that we do on the electrical side of things can impact the mechanical folks. And the stuff that we do on the mechanical side can easily impact the electrical folks. Okay? But there is a common language between both of us. And it happens to be 3D. And that's why I call it the electromechanical language. Right? Some of it's electrical, some of it's mechanical. But it allows us to talk to each other. And the big thing is it allows us to avoid to redraw in two different tools. And as a matter of fact, before I started with Altium, the company I was working for, I had one of the best PCB guys working for me on a particular project. I also had one of their best mechanical folks. This is a company I worked at prior to Altium. And we were trying to build something that had very, very specific uh, tolerances, very, very specific design to it. But they were using two completely different tools. And even though we tried to collaborate as much as we could, because the tools couldn't talk to each other, they had to each draw it in their own tools. And sure enough, in the end, we still had to do a respin because each of them took various liberties within their own tools. So if we had had that 3D, we could have easily removed the, that uh, particular respin. It also expedites the placement on the PCB. And on the PCB, if you can pass before, between the electrical and the mechanical engineers or the or drafters and the designers, uh, then it uh, makes that placement uh, rock solid so everybody knows what's going on. And furthermore, it ultimately impacts the route, right? So if everybody knows how the placement is supposed to be set, and the mechanical folks understand that the route becomes difficult to move after it's been established, then you can route without the worry that something's going to get moved and then going to cause a reroute to happen again. You know, for example, for mechanical folks, moving a spacer is not that big of an issue. However, they may move it about a half an inch, and that puts it right on top of your FPGA, which may have 800 pins. And so to move that over, would require maybe two weeks of re, uh, rerouting over there. So these are the kind of things that you want to try to avoid, and 3D can help you avoid that. All right. Interestingly enough, what I'm going to show you today in Altium is the way we've been doing it for the last eight years. Okay, It started in Altium Designer 6.8, the methodology I'm going to show you. But Altium's always had a 3D capability in it. And really the biggest difference between the legacy version, which was everything up to 6.7, and then the version that we use in 6.8 is where we actually put the, the model. And the model in 6.7 and prior was actually attached to the symbol. And I'll show you a little bit of an example of that here in just a moment. But after that, in 6.8 and thereafter, it's attached to the footprint. And it has to do with orientation issues. Now, the reason I bring this up is because you may still see that there are things in, in Altium that point to the legacy stuff. They didn't get rid of it. It's still in there. And there are a few companies that had adopted the earlier version of it, and they still use it. Though I think that with the newer version and with the features and capabilities, I would hope that they've adopted the newer stuff rather than the older stuff at this point. But the fact of the matter is, even in Altium Designer 16, which is the latest and greatest, they still have it in here. So in the slide that you see, the first thing you want to do is not use the PCB 3D library. Okay? And then you'll see that listed in Altium Designer. The second thing is you do not want to link a 3D model and the symbol library editor. So let's jump over here to Altium and bring it on up here and take a look. All right, what I've brought up over here is the spirit level. This is a project that's been with Altium. It's their example project. It's a comprehensive project that shows you everything, FPGA, schematics, PCBs, libraries. It's been around for the longest time. And it does have the legacy uh, version of the 3D in it as well. And, but what I want to show you, and this is going to be true for any schematic library, that when you click into a schematic library, into the editor here, and I'm going to bring up the schematic library panel so you can see the whole thing here, you'll notice at the bottom that there is a panel that is called model, okay, model editor. And this is where most of us put our footprints, and that's perfectly fine. But in addition to this example, you, you see over here that there's also a PCB 3D model that was attached to it. This is the legacy version. You don't want to do this in your designs. And, and the reason I bring that up is that if you look at Add Footprint over here in the bottom, you will, if you do a drop down, you will notice that it also has three, PCB 3D. So again, you do not want to use this feature. It's the legacy feature. If you add it in and you go to the PCB side and then you try to render the 3D, it won't show up. All right. And then the last thing I'll show you here, and then we'll move on to the good stuff, 
is if you go to File, New, and you go into our library, you'll notice that there is the PCB 3D library. Again, do not use this library. So in the new version, everything is done through the footprint. Okay, can't emphasize that enough. Everything we're going to do in the new version for 3D is done through the footprint. And by the way, that was a very radical departure for Altium, where they wanted all the models to be attached to the symbol. Um, so just, just be aware of that. But again, it had to do with orientation issues, and we'll talk more about that as we go along. So let me bring up my example over here for our webinar. So I am in now the PCB library. So this is a PCB lib, and I've got some examples to show you over here. And I think really the key thing to show you here is just I'll show you a detailed res resistor that we made. We're in the 2D mode here, and in the 2D mode, um, we can draw or we can either do 3D bodies or we can bring in step files. And again, I'm going to go through all those details here in a little bit. But what I want to show you is that once you've got that information in here, like these 3D bodies, then you just hit the 3 key, and there it is. All right. And so there's an example that we, we're going to take a look at as we go along. But before we go into that, I actually have to take a step back and talk to you about the component clearance rule. And the reason why that's important because is due to the fact that Altium handles components that do have 3D bodies or any type of body to it versus ones that don't very differently. And that's why I want to bring that to your attention. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to bring this up. Okay. By the way, all the files I'm going to show you today are available upon request, so feel free to ask us for them, and we're more than happy to uh, provide them to you. So let's take a look at a few examples that I made. These are all components. All right, These are components I made. They're a part of the library that we just had open here just a moment ago. These first couple of components you see do not have any type of 3D body with them. Okay, They don't. And uh, so as a result, Altium has to handle it in a different way and they handle it using something called a bounding rectangle. And the bounding rectangle is really defined as everything that you have in the component with the exception of the designator. So as a matter of fact, if we look at example three here, so I'm going to scroll in. I'm going to hold down my control key, and I'm going to scroll in over here. And I'm going to click on that, and you'll notice that it has a square. You notice something about this square. I'm going to scroll in a little bit further so you can see it. Everything is contained within the square. The square is no bigger the necessary in order to contain all of the components of it. Okay, That's a bounding rectangle for Altium Designer. Now, uh, the reason I bring that up is because the component clearance rule needs to have some information. And as I mentioned, if it doesn't have a component body in it, it's got to use the bounding rectangle instead. So let's take a look quickly at this rule just to kind of show you what it looks like. By the way, this is not the only clearance rule in Altium. There's other clearance rules like the, uh, the, the, the one that everybody uses, the electrical clearance rule. That's for the copper. And then there's also the ones for the silk as well. But what we've got over here is we have our component clearance rule. And it's uh, we have a minimal clearance here. And we're not going to worry about the vertical clearance at this point in time. All right, so I'm going to cancel this here. But do keep in mind this 10 mils. This is really important to us as we go along here. So this rule is being effective for everybody. And uh, there's no exceptions to this rule. So right now you can see that we're in violation. But I'm going to zoom in. So again, I'm going to hold on my control key. And I'm going to mouse scroll into this here. And you can see I've got the violation. And you'll notice the violations due to the fact that there are mechanical lines that are being opposed against each other here. Now, how do I know it's the mechanical lines and not other things that are going on, like the annular ring or even the solder mask? Well, if I hold, if I do a control M, control M is in Mary, I can get a measurement here. And you can see over here, if I go from the solder mask over to the bounding rectangle of the other component, it's 18 mils. Remember, our component clearance rule is only 10 mils. So this obviously means that Altium is using the, uh, the lines that are on the mechanical layer as the bounding rectangle here. Okay? And that's why it's showing this particular violation. Let's take a look at another example here. I'm going to hold down my control key. Actually, I'm going to scroll down here. And let's take a look at this one. Now, this one, example three, I don't have any mechanical information on here. I'm just basically using uh, these pads along with their solder mask. Okay? And if we look at this over here, you'll see that this is being violated if I move this in and I bring it into the point where it's violating. All right, so there's the violation point. Again, if I do a control M, you're going to see it's this solder mask that's actually causing the issue. Actually, let's see if I can get a little closer just to show you I'm not cheating over here. But that's 9 mils, as opposed to the annular ring, which I believe is at 13 when I tested this the last time. Yeah, it's about 13 mils. So this just gives you a good example of what's happening. And just very quickly to mention this same thing here where you have 
a, you have information or that you have lines on the uh, overlay, and the overlay is doing the same thing with this bounding rectangle as well. So as I bring this in, it's the overlay that the uh, Altium is using for the bounding rectangle. All right, it gets kind of interesting. The reason I bring that up, I think that's pretty straightforward at that point in time. Where it gets kind of interesting is when we start looking at this example here, and I'm going to zoom on in again. I'm holding my control key, and I am scrolling with my mouse. You'll notice that there's no violation here. So why is that? Because even though example 9 has no component bodies, these hash marks over here represent a component body, example 9 does not have one. And what happens with this is that in example 8 and example 7, since they have component bodies, Altium no longer uses the definition of a bounding rectangle. It instead it uses whatever you've got over here for the, for the model. And as a matter of fact, you'll notice that these don't even seem to um, you'll notice that they don't even seem to uh, cause an error if I over, almost overlap them. Now let me hit the three key because you'll see why in here in just a moment. So if I bring these up to here each other, now once I get them close they'll show violation, but they're only going to show vol violation based on the actual model that I have. The fact of the matter is these, these holes can practically be laid on top of each other and Altium doesn't really seem to at least call it a violation in terms of a component clearance rule. It may call it a component a violation because the silks are overlapping or because there's some electrical things that would overlap. But from a component rule standpoint, it's perfectly happy with this. So just be aware of that. That's why we're not seeing, when we go back to the 2D mode by hitting the 2 key, that's why we're not seeing any of these errors until we almost put it on top of each other or in the case between a one that has a bounding rectangle and one that uh, has a 3D body, it's not until I bring it up very close to that line that's on the mechanical layer that I finally get the error. So that's, uh, that's what I wanted to bring to your attention over here. Now you may be thinking to yourself, look, if I had example 7 and I've got this component in the center here, but I don't really want anything to, from a component point of view, I don't want anything to encroach anything uh, near my, my silk, what can I do about that? Because I don't really have a button that says take the 3D body or take the bounding rectangle. So a little trick that my good friend Jeff Condit, he's one who's done a couple of webinars with us, uh, showed me over here. Uh, what he did was he basically said, well, make another body. And again, I'll show you how to make these bodies here in just a moment. But I'm going to hit the three key so you can see it. So in this example that I have right here, I'll pull this away so we no longer have the violation. There's actually two bodies. There's a step model over here, and then there's a really, really thin 3D body over here. And if I hold down my shift key to get the globe and I right mouse click, you'll see that it's really, really thin. In fact, the thing I have is 0 0.01 millimeters. All right? And the reason I did that was to make sure that I now had a representation like a bounding rectangle. And this is extremely useful for things like uh, design for manufacturing where, yeah, you may have a component over here, but you want a clearance so you can get tools or equipment to pull it out. And this thing will now violate. Well, between the, the bounding, or let's say the 3D body that I've made here that extends past the silk versus the mechanical line that you have over here. So that's another way to handle it as well. So if you're interested in this uh, particular uh, drawing that I've done so that you can play with it, feel free again to ask us for it and be more than happy to provide it to you. But I do want you to understand that concept of the, components rule, the component clearance rule and that idea between bounding rectangles uh, and those components that have 3D bodies. All right, let's get on to the good stuff over here. I am now going to jump over to my PCB library, and let's make a 3D body. So I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to take this basic shape, and uh, let's take a look at how to make this 3D body. I am going to go into the Place menu on the top, and I'm going to click on, I'm going to click on 3D body. All right. Now, before I do that, I just want to make a side note. If you're following along, or you're familiar with Altium, you're probably saying to yourself, hey, this 3D body command is usually buried in the middle over here. It's not on the top, and that's correct. And as a matter of fact, under tools, we talk about 3D body placements here in a few minutes when I talk about step files. Uh, I also move that to the top as well. And the primary reason I moved that to the top was to kind of not have me hunt and peck for this during the webinar. But if you are using a command quite often, I'll show you how to move it. And I know it's a little bit of a tangent to this, but I think it's a really useful thing to do. If you want to move around your commands within your menu, you can bring your cursor just above the document bar. So you have your graphical editing area, you have your document bar above that, and in the gray area above that area, which is where your menus and your icons are going to be, you're going to right click there and you're going to click on customize. And that's going to bring up the customizing PCB lib editor. 
note that this is only for this editor. So if you want to do it to the other editors, you have to do the same thing in each one of the other editors separately. Once you're in here, then you can go into any of the menus and you can move these around. So I'm not executing commands at this point. I'm organizing commands at this point. So I can move this any way I so see fit. All right, And you can do that to any of your commands. You can move to other menus. You can create new ones. You can give them hotkeys. There's a lot of neat things that you can do with this. So I definitely recommend that you take a look at it. Now, if, um, if you happen to mess something up where you put it somewhere and you don't remember where you put it, or you accidentally dropped it off and it got deleted, not a big problem. You can click on toolbars over here. You can click on restore, and this will get you back to the installation default. So just want to bring that to your attention here. So let's get on to it. Place 3D body. All right, we get this dialog over here. This dialog is used for both, uh, for both the uh, 3D bodies and for the steps as well. As a matter of fact, you can see that this was looking for a generic 3D model, which is our step file down here. Again, I'll talk about that in a few minutes. The bodies we want to create within Altium, we've got one of three flavors. We can do extruded, which a lot of people use quite often. I'll show you an example of that. And then we can also do cylinders. And you notice as I click on each of these radials, this region down here will change based on its needs. And then you also have spheres as well. So I'm going to do extruded. All right. And then I'm also going to change the identifier. This is kind of important because one of the things you do quite often with 3D bodies is you actually stack them and move them into each other to uh, create different things. So it's not just usually just one block. It's multiple blocks coming together to make a something that looks uh, very much uh, like a component. In fact, you'll see this more with the cylinders and spheres here in, in a few moments. But uh, for now, I'm just going to call this extruded. Okay, and we'll call it extruded yellow. The body side, 99% of the times it's going to be on the top. Unless you're doing something really unusual where it actually sit, resides on the bottom, even though the, the footprints are on the top, you're always going to have it sit on the top side. On the PCB, if you ever flip the part to the bottom, Altium manages the flip of, to the bottom side, so you don't have to worry about that part. As to the layer, there's, again, no official concept of like IEEE or IPC standards that say you've got to use a certain layer. My recommendation is whatever layer you select, it is uh, everybody agrees to that layer. Otherwise, it's going to cause a lot of problems and mismatches on your various uh, mechanical layers. So later on, when you want to create your documentation, um, it can be a bit of a hassle to clean up. So at least pick a layer, be consistent with it. Altium has used, I believe, mechanical layer 13 for their 3D bodies. So if you want to stick with what they've do, what they've done, you could do that as well. But the key thing is to be consistent with it. You can do a color, any color you want to do over here. So let's just pick, uh, I'll just leave this one red for now. It's fine. You also have color opacity. So if you bring it to the left side, it's going to be lighter. If you bring it to the other side, it's going to be darker and everything in between. In terms of the overall height and the standoff height, just take note of this, that, for example, if I had a component body that I wanted to put above my goal wings, and let's say that component body was only two millimeters, I I wouldn't put two millimeters over here because actually what you have is you have an overall height minus the standoff height. So I would actually have to put three millimeters here. And on the standoff height, let's say it was one millimeter. So the, the final height of this box that will be created or whatever I extrude is actually going to be two millimeters. Now, the text file itself, you can put this in if you want. So if you want to put a logo on top of one of the sides or if you want to put a different pat pattern on there, you can do that. You just click on it. It's usually a bitmap or JPEG that you would bring in to do that. As for snap points and axes, I wouldn't worry about this. It's kind of the product that comes along with uh, doing orientations, especially with step files. Nothing we need to do over here at this point in time. So now I'm going to press OK, and now I'm going to start to draw. All right, so I'm going to click onto these corners here, pretty much like any other type of routing, wiring, or making a polygon uh, to, to draw this off at this point. And then once I'm done with it, I'm going to right click. And now I've got my hash lines, which represents the fact that I now have my extruded part. One of the other things um, you'll notice here is that this immediately popped up again. And it will keep on popping up until I cancel it. So I don't have to keep going into the menu to dig it up, which is kind of a ni really a nice feature. So let's add one more in here for grins. I'm going to make this one yellow just to give a good contrast color. And I will make this one solid. And I'm also going to just bring this one where you have it um, We'll say four on this, but I'm going to make the standoff height one, uh, zero. So this, this will actually be flush with the PCB surface. And I'm going to press OK. And again, I'm going to draw my extrusion. I'll just draw a quick box over here. And we're good to go. Again, it comes up. I'm going to cancel it. Now, all we see right now are projections. So if we want to see what we actually got here, we've got to hit the three key. And there it is. Okay. 
and then I'll just zoom it around. Again, I'm holding down my, I'm, I don't have a 3D mouse, so I'm holding my shift key to get the globe, and I'm using my right mouse button to kind of turn it around as such. So that's what you can do with the 3D bodies. Adding the cylinder is the same way, adding the sphere is the same way. Just follow the directions uh, within the, the region that's asking for the radius and the, or the height, if you need a height for it, or a standoff height, and away you go. So let's take a look at some of the other ones that you can do over here. So here's the originally where I had no 3D. All right, here's just a very simple example. And the point I want to drive home with this is that you don't have to get really fancy with this. You just really need to put a block in there so Altium has a height and it knows how to you know, back away from the horizontal component clearance aspects of it. That's all you need to do. So if this is supposed to be a resistor, that will work. It may not look pretty, but for the uh, component purpose clearance for, uh, purposes, it works just fine. If you want to get a little more fancier with it, you can. Here's where I've used five different cylinders. All right, we can click on these, and you can see the 3D bodies for each one, so the radius, the height. In this case, I had a flip at 90 degrees. You'll also, I don't know if I did it on this one or not. Let me see. Bring it over here. Yeah, this one over here, I did a negative standoff, so it looks like it's going through the hole. All right, so you can make it look like this, and if you really want to get fancy with it, and obviously it's going to take a lot more time. This one actually took me well over three hours, but just to show you, you can do it, all right? There is a resistor, and it's actually a pretty accurate resistor as well. I mean, I, I did this one very specifically to the specification of this uh, of this particular component. If we hit the two key over here, well, that's what we've got. All right, just a number of these of these different components together that make it up. One of the things I'm going to do here is just going to pull some things apart so you can see how I did it. I'm going to do a control, I uh, probably a Shift S. And this is going to put me in single layer mode. So Shift S, and I'm going to go to mechanical one. All right. And with mechanical one, I'm going to pull this one off here to the side. And I'm also going to pull out this one as well, just to so you can see how this was put together. All right. And then if I hit my three key, you'll notice that now for me to have mounted, made this rounded part over here, I actually made a sphere out of that and put it in there on the side. Each one of these was just a smaller uh, cylinder that I put, uh, that I stood on that side. And you'll also notice over here to get this nice round effect that I have on the right side where the uh, where the lead was getting bent, I actually backed it off um, half the radius on each side and then made a small spear over there so I gave it a nice rounded edge. So these are the things that you can do with it if you want to uh, get that fancy with it. There's certain things you really can't do. Unfortunately, I really haven't found a good way to do things like um, solid rectangles. Maybe there's a way to do it, but I'm just not, my head's not gotten wrapped around enough to try to make that happen. But for what you got over here, you can get, it, it's enough to get you uh, where you need to go with on the 3D stuff. Now let's talk about step, uh, the step stuff. Now on the step files, we're taking something that someone's already made. And if you're familiar with step, or if you're not, let me just give you kind of a brief overview. It's a universal language that all the mechanical tools have adopted. And now amazingly enough about step is that its specification is massive. It talks about everything you'd ever want to know about the materials, about uh, the shapes and everything else. And so a lot of times, what you get over here is really a subversion of the entire step. You can take a look on the Wikipedia if you want, but it's you don't need to know that much about it other than the fact that come, uh, most most tools are able to bring in the basic shapes here. There was a version, there was like a, two, a step 203 and then a step 214. Altium does bring in 214. The major difference was that with two, um, 203, I believe it was, you would be all one color, where now you can bring in one that's got multiple colors to it. All right. Now the big thing with step files, as I mentioned earlier, is there's the problem with orientation. The problem with the orientation is that no two companies out there have the same methods of handling origin within their uh, editing tool. And as a result, when it comes in, it's very rare that it's ever going to come in uh, the way you want it to. It's going to be upside down, it's going to be on its side, and so on and so forth. So we have to deal with the orientation issues, and that's what we're going to take a look at here. So I'm going to hit the two key to go back to the 2D mode. And let me bring in a part for you here. So let's do a file, excuse me, our file, and we're going to do an open. And then I'm going to bring in, let's see, I'm sorry, I should have brought, I forgot I jumped over here before I did this. Give me a moment to jump back to our presentation. Go to our webinars. And this is the, no, either one of these will work just fine. Pardon me here as I'm looking around here. Oh, I know why. Ah, silly me. I made the mistake everybody else made. The reason why this didn't work is because this is not a file open. 
and in fact, you'd think after doing this about 20 times, I should know it's under Place 3D Body. So if we go to Place 3D Body over here, uh, then we go to the generic 3D model, and then when the 3D model over here, we have some options. One of them is that if you have a vault, and I think Altium Content Vault might even connect into this as well. I haven't played with it yet. But you can either get them from the vault. They also give you this radio for the file, but if you click on it, it's going to say linking unavailable in the PCB library. So the 3D body capability is available on the, um, it's available in the PCB doc uh, area. However, uh, and the reason they allow that for linking is because if you bring in a really large chassis, if you had to attach it to the PCB dock, it makes the PCB dock really big. So they, they give you that option for the PCB dock, but they don't give it to you for the PCB library. So the, really the only option that you have here is to embed it. And when you embed it, you got to load it from a file, and hopefully this time it's already there. It is. Okay, I'm already there. So the, um, the, the, the one I'm going to bring in is the SOT223, and we'll press open. Now, can I deal with the rotations over here? I can, but you know what? It's just a lot easier to deal with them with the tools afterwards and just to simply bring it in at this point in time. I'm going to press OK and I drop it in. And again, this does come up. I'm going to cancel it. And obviously, something's not right here because it's not fitting properly, so we've got to take a look here. So we're going to hit the 3 key, and we're going to see, sure enough, it's on its side. All right, so there's a couple of things that we can do. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to at least get this uh, laid down so that it's on the XY axis. And the way we do that is through the tools. And as I mentioned earlier on, you want to look for this thing called the 3D body placement. And the submenu under the 3D body placement is a really useful one to take a look at. You may not use all of these commands, but they're very useful commands to, um, to know about. And there's different ways to do the same thing. So you just take the ones that you're most familiar with. That's one thing I do like about this. It's not only one way, and you've got to do it that way, or you're out of luck. There's different ways to handle it, and each of these are going to be based upon uh, what you think works best for you or the easiest ones to understand. So what I'm going to use is a first and foremost, I'm going to go back here and go to align face with the board. The other thing I'm going to mention at the bottom is that when you use any of those commands, Altium does show you the step-by-step -step instructions for them. There's one exception I'll show you a little bit later on, but generally speaking, it'll give you the instructions as to how to go through the command. So right now, it's prompting to pick a 3D body. So I'm going to pick this body here, click on my cursor, so now I've got it. Now it's going to say choose a face. So when I move around here, it's asking me which one of these surfaces do I want to use to align with the PCB surface. So I'm going to click, click on that, and boom, it's now done. Now, I'm not totally out of the woods yet because, yeah, I got it corrected for the XY plane, but um, obviously uh, I still need to get it rotated. Well, the cool part is, is that the classic rotation that we use in all of the libraries and in the, the, in the regular editing tool still works here, and that is by left mouse clicking on the part, so I'm moving it around by doing that. So left mouse clicking, I'm moving it around. And then I hit the, uh, the space bar, and I can rotate it. And that's all I'm doing. And then I drop it down, and I'm a happy camper. All right. Now, um, for those people who are very um, uh, precise and want to have this, like myself, who uh, want to have this thing dead on and not just close enough, we can do that as well. We can use something called snap points. So I'm going to move this off here over here to the side. And I'm going to hold down my shift key, and I'm going to bring this down. So I'm going to, after I let go of my shift key, I'm going to now use my panning by just right mouse clicking up. right? And then I'm going to do a little more rotation here, and that will be fine. I'm going to use another tool that's in this, and it's Tools, 3D Body Placement, Add Snap Points to the Vertices. So uh, pay a particular attention to this because there's a, a little caveat to this that I'm going to try to show you here. Now, again, I'm going to select this particular component that's on the right side, and I did. And at the bottom, it says, pick the vertice where the snap point will be added. Well, I want this in the center because I can center this off to the origin of my component. But you're going to notice something. You'll see these little uh, 3D cursors that are coming up on the screen. And by the way, there's a little bit of residual because of my graphics card on this particular computer. Um, I'll just rock this a little bit, and you'll see it will go away. But the fact of the matter is I can't pick a point in the center because there's no edge for it to pick it on. But I can do something over here where I can tell it to take the midpoint of two points. In order for me to do this, you have to hit the space bar. So I have not clicked on it. Any, all I've done is selected it. But now I'm going to hit the space bar. And at the bottom, it's going to change it saying pick vertex one of two. Snap point will be placed at their midpoint. So now I'm going to move my cursor over here to this corner. And I'm going to click once. Now it's asking for vertex two of two. And I'm going to click again. 
and boom, and I'm going to right click off to end the command, and you'll notice where my cursor is, I now have my snap point in the center. There are other commands up here, tools, 3D, uh, 3D body placement, that I can use to take this and move it over here. But really, most people, what they do, and I completely agree with this method, is it's just easier to kind of just go back to the two, to the 2D mode, and just grab onto this and move it on here to the center. Now, one of the things I'm having a little bit of an issue with, and this is again where you've got to be a little bit tricky with stuff, is that uh, you'll notice that when I click on the center over here, I'm not getting the, the solid center. That's because in the preferences, in the DXP preferences, what I had done is I turned off snap to center. If I had it turned on when I was showing you the bounding rectangle example, my cursor would have kept scooting off when I had zoomed in very close to show you those violations. So that's why um, I'm not necessarily getting it on the center over here. But one of the tri without team just got to get a little tricky with it. So one of the things I do is I do a control. I'm going to select this. I'm going to do a control X. Control X and control C are the same thing just that control X is a cut versus a copy. Now, every time you do a copy or cut in Altium's PCB library or in, this, or in its layout editor, you get a cursor prompt. And that cursor prompt is really looking for a reference point. So I know a lot of people, when they're initially doing copy and paste in the PCB tools, they get a little frustrated with Altium because that cursor, they forget about the cursor. But once you get over that, you find that it's a very, very useful feature that they provide. So I'm going to make sure that this is dead center, which it does allow me to do. I click on that, and now it's disappeared, which is fine by me. Now I'm going to do a Control V, and now I just center it up, and now this is dead on. So if I hit my three key at this point, there it is. All right. Uh, so one of the other things I want to show you about is how to make a step file out of uh, out of a print, out of a board. Okay. So let's take a look at that over here. So I'm going to bring that one up. So you've got that over here. I'm going to bring up this going example. So this is a goal wing. So I basically took the measurements off of that SOT 223. And I said, oh, I'm going to make a goal wing in here. So some of the points that I wanted to bring to your attention are as follows. First and foremost, if you start doing anything below, let's say, uh, one millimeter uh, with an Altium, even though the grid is supposed to be able to handle that, I was having a little bit of a time uh, getting things exactly the way I wanted it. So what I did instead is I actually drew it to a larger scale. And you can see that right over here. In fact, this used to be in the box. I moved it a little bit here prior to the, the webinar. And then once I've done, once I did that, I can select this here, make it a union. Okay, making a union is just basically going into tools. Uh, let's see, go into tools, convert. All right, and then you can um, create a union from the selected objects at that point in time. All right, and from there, you, when you've got a union, you can actually resize it. And as long as there's no components in the union, you can actually shrink it down. And that's what I did over here. So this was drawn first, and I copied it, I shrank it down, and I brought it in so that it would actually fit into this box here. The other neat feature with Altium is that as long as you have anything that's enclosed, you can pretty much make a board out of it. So for example, if I go into place here, and it doesn't even matter which layer I do this on, if I go here and I place a line, and I start drawing this, OK? And I click, as long as this is now enclosed, doesn't like it, but it's enclosed, here I sweep over it and I select it. Then I can go into design here, and I go in the board shape, and I can say define from selected objects. And now my board is made off of that. So again, as long as it's enclosed, you can do it. So since it's enclosed, I can pretty make, much make anything as long as they don't, um, you know, like with the example of the going, as long as there's not something uh, beyond this that has to go in a different direction, I can make things within it. All right. So uh, I'll select, I'm going to do a control Z to get this one back over here. The other thing, obviously, you need to do is you have to have a thickness to it. And we can't obviously rotate this because we're in a 2D view. But we, had, we can envision that this would have uh, some type of width to it. So in order to do that, we've got to go into Design, Layer Stack Manager, and we just got to make sure that our thickness is the desired thickness. It really doesn't matter which layer we do this on. It just needs to have a thickness to it. All right. With that, we can hit the 3 key. Okay. Now we've got our, our component over here. All right. There, or pardon me, our board. Really, it's our board. The last thing we need to do is we need to change its color. And the way we change its color is we hit the L key. And in the L key, obviously, this would come up in either blue or green, depending on what your default is. But you want to change the top solder mask and the bottom solder mask to a gray so it looks like the gold wing. All right? And once you've got this, then you can easily go to File, Export, and then you, set, you export your Step 3D, and you're good to go. That's how you actually make this. Now, there's a little caveat to this as well. If you do this in 2D, you, yes, you can get to the exact same uh, commands uh, to export this out. However, it will come out in green. So 
if you want this in the color in the 3D that you set up, you've got to do this. You actually have to export it in the 3D mode. All right. Let's take a look at the results of this. So you, you, you export this as a step file, and then you can bring it in. And if we take a look here at the library and the step from the board, here's our original step file. Okay, I added a couple of other snap points in this when I was playing with it. But this, believe it or not, has all been built. This one that you see that's on the pads is all built in Altium. So here's my box. This is nothing more than an extruded 3D body. And then these pins over here are the ones that I made using the board. Right, so I made a few of these, and well, I made one of these, exported, and then I changed out the width over here to uh, get the larger pin, or the larger gull wing. All right, one last thing I'm going to show you in Altium before um, we, uh, before I turn it over here to Tom, or I show you at least the two other. I'll show you something in Altium. I'll show you two websites. A quick note that you'll want to make a reference, and I'll turn it over to Tom. The Let's say that you don't really want to bother with all of this over here. You're more of a spreadsheet kind of person or a person that would rather just put some numbers in and let Altium handle the rest. Well, let's take a look at this here. So this is the spirit level. This is one that you probably have seen many times before if you've ever done a demonstration uh, with Altium. However, I've removed all of the 3D bodies that they provided. So if I hit the 3 key over here, it's completely void of any 3D bodies. So I'm going to hit the 2 key and go back. And let's say you're in the middle of a project. You don't really have any 3D bodies and you want to add some in there, but you don't want to go back to the library, you don't want to mess with the 3D bodies, you want to go finding steps, perfectly understandable. Well, Altium's got a really nice tool in here called Tools, Manage 3D Bodies for Components on the Board. And they give you one of two options. One of the options is interactive, and the other one is a batch. So let's talk about each one for a moment. The interactive, you have each one of these here, and each one of your components is listed, and you tell it what you want to add to it. So let's take R10, for example. And what Altium's done with R10 is it looked at the part, and it's saying, look, you have information on the top layer, you have information on your overlays, and you also have information of all layers together. And it's really a matter of just turning these things on if you want to turn them on. So if I just want to do nothing more than a resistor based on the pads, or 3D body based on the pads, I would turn this on. I can turn on multiples of these two, and I can have different colors and different representations most of the time, people just turn on the one that's most convenient. And a lot of times, they'll use the bounding rectangle based on the, uh, the top overlay, which is the silk. From there, you can add a standoff height. You can add an overall height. You can, uh, you can put a top side projection, bottom side projection. Um, and I have to admit, I don't even know what the registration layer is. I don't normally uh, play, with, uh, play with this particular aspect of it here. But you have the colors, and you have the opacities as well. So you can basically build this up each part at a time just by going through this. The key thing is to really have the overall height. The other stuff, to me, is kind of almost secondary. It's that overall height, especially if you're going to test for the vertical. And you do that for each single one if you've got the time and you know the overall height. That's probably the hardest one to find or the one more, more difficult to look up. Now, if you're just looking to just provide 3D bodies and you know that your parts are going to be within, uh, are really going to be within most of the boundaries, but you want to make, make use of the component clearance rule based on the 3D bodies rather than the um, bounding rectangles, you can certainly do that. So the, the batch update tab that I've clicked on over here, now you're no longer dealing with individual components. You're saying apply whatever one you turned on over here, enable to all of them. And then you can do that as well. All right. And it's kind of, you know, it's a little bit of a potluck over here as to how it's going to do it because, again, it's just going to apply it to all 100 plus parts. And that's what I'm going to show here just because of the lack of time. Something to play with, but nevertheless, uh, let's just do this here, and we'll hit the batch uh, execute. And we did 115 components now, and I'll close this. So you now do see all the 3D bodies there. And of course, if I hit the 3 key, now you can see it looks like the warehouse district of a local city. All right. So if we go over here and hold on my, my uh, shift key, and we bring it over here, and there they are. And if there's any on the, I don't think there's any on the bottom. But you can see all of those components at this point in time. So that's just kind of a, a quick and dirty way of doing it, too, if you just don't want to get that deep into it. All right, lastly, I promised you two other sites that I think might be of interest to you. Let me bring those up here. Okay, and drag those up here right now. So one site you may have heard of already, very useful. It's really amazing how far this site has gone in many a couple of years. If you're looking for step files, there is 3D Content Central, which is basically a volunteer site. Everybody who puts stuff on there is volunteering their work on it. Uh, so it's, uh, it's gotten to the point where I think you probably could find almost any component because a lot of these uh, suppliers have kind of gotten on the bandwagon. In the past, it was really just whoever was willing to put their stuff out there. The one thing, you do need to have a login, but the big thing I want to just kind of forewarn you of is that, like with anything else, 
these parts are being verified by the site, so do make sure that the tolerances, the mentions are um, appropriate. So that's just my only uh, caution with this. If you want an organization that actually does make the parts and can verify and guarantee that the uh, dimensions are going to be correct, there's an organization called Simplified Solutions. They are one of our partners. This is a paid-for subscription where you get not only access to their library, but they'll give you X number of parts that they'll build for you per year. It depends on the subscription that you want to have. But again, the key thing over here is that the parts you're going to get have been verified, whereas in 3D Content Central, there's no verification there. You're, you're going to take the responsibility for that. All right, with that, I'm going to turn over the microphone to my colleague, Tom Cassidy. So Tom's screen will come up here in just a moment. Um, but uh, just to give a brief introduction, so Tom's been working with us here for a while at 9.connects and has been doing um, a number of projects with us, PCB projects, and several of them which have had some uh, mechanical challenges to it. So Tom, I do see your screen at this point. Are you on? I am on, yes. All right, here you're just fine. Great. Okay, well, thank you, Paul. Um, as you said, my name is Tom Cassidy. I've been doing electrical and mechanical engineering work for quite a while. I've been with Nine Dots for about a year now. And I'm going to show a demonstration on why you would want to use a, th a third-party package, essentially, to do your 3D modeling. Um, as Paul has shown, you can do a fair amount of 3D modeling within Altium itself, and you would think that would probably be adequate. So why would you want to take the time and effort to go to another package? Um, one thing I found as I've been working on this is doing everything in one package sometimes um, hides common, common mode errors. You end up, for some reason, you did your footprint wrong, but then you build your model around your footprint. You won't know that since you used your, your incorrect footprint as a basis. So I think there's definitely some benefit in, in taking the time and effort to apply 3D models to other parts. Um, so with that said, I'm going to go ahead and walk through an example. You can see here on the screen, I've got a very simple board with a simple connector on it. This is just a Molex header. I'll switch to 3D, 3D mode. You should be able to see it's just a connector on the edge of the board. Now, this particular project, this board is going to fit into an enclosure that's going to have a wall over here on the left side. So I needed to have a, a cutout to be able to let the, the connectors come in from the back of the board. The connectors and wires are plugged in. So my question, obviously, is how, how deep does this cutout have to be? So um, one way you would do this, obviously, is to go to the data sheets, figure out the dimensions of the part that plugs in there, and use that as your, as your uh, indicator for how deep that should be, which is what I started off with. However, as I said, I like to verify, and uh, using 3D models is a great way of doing that. So what we're going to do is switch over to a package that um, I found online. It's called Onshape. It's a uh, very nice little package. Um, it's totally web-based, so you don't have to install any software. You can use it anywhere. In fact, they even have options to use it on a mobile device, like a cell phone or an iPad or something. Um, and it's got it's very full feature. They just came out of beta a few months ago, so they're continually adding features. But as of now, it's fully functional. And I think the nicest thing I found about it is they offer a free account, so you can actually sign up, sign up for a free account, have full access to the entire functionality. You're only limited by the number of parts. So as a double E, if you're just making a, a part every now and then, it's a very nice service to be aware of. Um, so here I have, I've downloaded the step files from Molex's website. You can see this is the header that goes on the, the circuit board, and this is the connector that plugs into it. So uh, Molex is a very good company about providing step models for their, their parts. So going back to the original plan of being able to figure out how I can actually fit this into the board, my, my obvious solution would be, well, I want to plug this into this and see how it works. So I did that. I made an assembly. You can see the two parts here are now lined up as they would normally plug in. And what I did, uh, another feature of Onshape is let you do uh, movement with mates. So I created what's called a slider mate and defined limits. So now I can actually say, okay, that's plugged in and that's unplugged. So I can actually give myself real-life physical limits of what this thing will be. And given that, I can now, I exported step models from this model, and I exported from the same model, I exported two different versions. I extended it all the way out, exported what I call the open model, and then I plugged it all the way in. And just to show you real quick, you right click and you do export, pick your model type, and it downloads to your computer for you in a few seconds. So having those two models created, I then go back to Altium. And what I'm doing here is, in Altium, this is my footprint with the, in the 3D mode. 
So you can see the, uh, the body. This is just the blank body that you would normally put. Um, since I'm verifying, I want to be able to have more than one 3D body on there. So Altium lets you do that. Obviously, as Paul showed you, you could put more than one body. So I'm using another feature that they have, which is the opacity. And I'm basically turning on and off different models as I need them. So my first model is just the body, and that's on. It's a little tricky because they don't really let you see which model it is over in the list. But I basically just turn that model down or turn it off. You see it goes away. And then I can get to, I've looked these up before, get to what I call the open model, turn that one on, and then you can see here that it's a model of both parts, and thus letting you see how it would fit in real world. So what I do is I save this, um, okay, my computer is pausing a bit. Ah. There we go. And then I update the circuit board with it so that I actually have the latest and greatest. And now you can see on my 3D model of the circuit board, I can actually see physically where that connector will be before it gets plugged in, and thus verifying that the depth of my circuit board is enough to be able to slide this in from the back and plug it in. The one other thing you may notice is it looks like I've actually got the, uh, the slide even deeper than it needs to be. And that's because um, connectors typically have wires coming off of them. That's kind of their purpose in life. And this particular connector has wires coming off the back, so I need to have some clearance for them as well. Um, and if this is enough of a solution, you can stop here or you can keep going. So what I did, being the perfectionist I am, I went back and I actually added wires to that part. So in, in Onshape, I imported the part and then drew three more wires um, and just sort of estimated their bend radius, but I could have gotten much more close to that and then created the same assembly but using that wired part. So now as you can see I can do the same thing. I can plug it in, unplug it, um, did the same thing. I exported these two models, went back to Altium, and go back to my part here and turn off what I'm showing you. That one's already off. I guess I'm on the... Okay. There we go. Turn that one off. So here you can see now on the, on the footprint, I've got my wired version of the open connector. And like I can say, I save that, update the circuit board. It's a little awkward, but it, it works once you get used to it. And now you can see on this board that, yes, I do have adequate clearance for the wires as well as everything else when it's open. And then just take the, to take this one step further, Paul mentioned that using 3D is a great way of going between the E world and the mechanical engineering world. Um, one thing you tend to do once you've got your circuit board done with all the 3D models is export a 3D model of the entire board, send that over to your mechanical uh, people, and, and they can actually put that into their model and make sure everything still lines up. Um, so if you take the time and effort to make a wired version, that actually helps them a lot as well. So what you can do, I actually have a... Uh, final version, which I think is this one. Nope. Altium moved it around on me. Um, that's not it. That's not it. That's not it. It must be the bottom one. Okay. Yes, wired close. So this is what it would look like in the final position. So if I save that, update the PCB with it, I now have a 3D model of the board as it would look once it's assembled and ready to go. So what we can now do is export this as a 3D body, um, creates a step model, and sends that over to your, your, your mechanical engineers, which I then imported into Onshape to show you. So now this is a 3D model, shows you know the, con the con connector with the wires, and if I had any other bodies on here, it would have, they would have showed up as well. I would have showed mounting holes. So this is another way to very much verify when this gets sent over the wall to the other departments that, yes, my intent is to have a connector here, and my intent is to have wires sticking through this way. So they put that in their model, they see where the wires need to go, and they have a very good visual clue of your design intent. Um, so I believe with that, I'm done. Um, oh, actually, one more thing. I actually have a few extra models in here I can show you just to give you an example of some of the fun stuff you can do. I made this for uh, one company. This is actually a MEMS microphone. 
Well, you can see the kind of detail you can get into. I added some fillets around here to make them round. I changed the colors. This is part mounted on the circuit board. Um, here's an inductor. So instead of just having a regular rectangle, you can make the part look a little bit more realistic. Um, here's a service mount LED with a dome. So I actually use some of the opacity controls here to give it kind of a clearish plastic look to it. And then this has special meaning to me. This was actually the first part I ever did in Onshape. I was working on a project. I needed a model. Signed up for Onshape about two hours after watching their videos um, and reading some documentation. I was able to make this part. So um, it's a very powerful package, relatively simple to use. They have a lot of very good video. So if you're at all interested, I go over and check out the web website. It's www.onshape.com. And just as a disclaimer, as Paul mentioned, we are not affiliated with them. It's just a company I found, I used, and I liked a lot. So I just wanted to let everybody know. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Paul. All right. Well, thank you very much, Tom, uh, for that uh, presentation there. Um, at uh, this point in time, I think we're really um, at the hour. And I want to thank everybody for joining us here today. Um, if you'd like to see this webinar again, the recording will be made available soon. Also, any of the uh, files that you saw today for Altium Designer, we will make available to you upon request as well. Tom, just a very quick question for you. I think there was also um, a, a file you made public for that uh, particular yeah. Onshape. Uh, yes, that's true. File another, thing, another thing that Onshape does is makes uh, collaboration among people very easy. And one of the ways they do that is allowing you to share your files. Um, since it's a web-based program, nothing is on your computer. Everything is on the web, and therefore anyone can get to it if you give them um, permission. So for the examples I just showed you, it's a public file. So if you log on, create an account, you can go to my account, which is Tom Cassidy, and you'll see that public document. And you'll be able to read, look at, and copy those files out and play with them to your heart's content. OK. And then the other thing, too, is with the uh, free version of it, um, even though there is somewhat of a file limitation, you said that within the, uh, within the file itself, you could have a number of assemblies? That's correct. Um, okay. you, you can have, I think, up to 10 different um, documents, they call them. But within those documents, you can create a large number of individual parts. So you're not limited to only 10 parts, per se. You're limited to 10 collections of parts. And after that, you're limited by the total memory space you take up. So you can't make thousands of parts within those 10 documents. But like I say, for, for the casual user and the occasional user, it's a very nice little package, easy to learn. And, and for free, basically, you can create some pretty fancy stuff. Good. All right. Well, there, uh, first and foremost, uh, thank you very much, Tom, for your time. And for everybody out in the audience there today, thank you very much for your precious time as well. Uh, we hope that this is a well-spent hour. So again, thank you for joining us, and you have a wonderful day.